If you run, looks like you're running already, but if you run officially, this will be the fourth race in five years. Yeah. Why do it? Well, for the same reasons I got in the race for governor more than five years ago. Uh, I sat down and talked with my wife, thought about it, prayed about it, and in the end we knew it would be difficult just running for governor in Wisconsin, a very blue state. And we did so because we were worried that our sons, who are now 19 and 20, were going to grow up in a state at that time that I mean, faced a $3.6 billion budget deficit, record job loss, double-digit tax increases. And I worried that my kids were going to grow up in a state that wasn't as great as the one I grew up in. Now, many years later, because of our reforms, the state is better. It is putting them on the right track. But I look at America today, particularly in Washington, and I see a federal government that gives me the same worries for my sons and, and their generation and future generations. And I'm optimistic enough, though, that I see not just what we did in Wisconsin, but I mean, Florida, Michigan, South Carolina. You look across America, common sense conservative leaders have transformed their states. With that kind of leadership, we can transform America again. You left Marquette before you got your degree. Mm -hmm. Isn't it kind of strange to have a presidential candidate who didn't finish college? Oh, sure, I think. But there's a lot of things about me that are un unlike any other candidate out there. I mean, the bottom line is, uh, like a lot of Americans, my senior year, I was working at IBM. They moved their office to Chicago. One of my clients was the American Red Cross. They offered me a job. And like a lot of people out there today, I jumped at that opportunity. I, I was going to college not only to get an education, but ultimately, ideally, to get a job. As governor, you cut taxes. As president, would you try to do the same thing? Absolutely. I think you've got to have a, a pro-growth, a pro-reform, and a pro-security uh, platform if, if you're going to be effective as the, the next leader of this great country. And part of that means reducing the burden on hardworking taxpayers. Let me talk to you about education. Mm -hmm. You're against Common Core. Mm -hmm. Why? Because to me, I think high standards are great, but they should be set by people at the local level, not by people from outside of individual states. Do you think people understand the Common Core? I mean, the defenders of Common Core say it's not as evil as everybody is portraying it. Do you think that's fair? Well, I think the idea of high standards is legitimate. I think like many things that get touched in Washington, it's been corrupted along the way, where through, uh, even though they'll say it's not a federal mandate, the reality is it's not the same as No Child Left Behind, but the Federal Department of Education has added all these strings attached, tied into federal dollars, so that local, local school boards are ultimately forced to deal with much of those things, even if that's not the decision they would make. It's why I argue overall with education, transportation, health care. I would take that money out of Washington and send it right back to your local community so you can spend that in your school district on the things that you think are priorities within that school district. In Wisconsin, in our case, long before Common Core, we had some of the best scores in the country. Why? Because we empower our local school districts to make those decisions. That's why we have the second best ACT scores in the country. So when you hear from your fellow governor, John Kasich, mm -hmm. who points to Matthew in the Bible and says, take care of the, the people who need the most, uh, what do you say? Well, I respectfully disagree with his view. My bottom line is I think the best way to take care of those in need is to provide them help, which is exactly what my plan does. But for those who are able, you know, the safety net we provide should be a safety net you can bounce out of, not a hammock you stay in. If someone is able, is able to work, we do them more damage by requiring them to be permanently indebted to the government than empowering with the skills and the education that they need to succeed. So is this the year of the anti-Obama candidate? Or? Well, I think it's a combination. I think it's certainly there's a, uh, not just on his policies, but even just through the mindset of somebody who came out of the Senate, who, who didn't have executive experience, who reads off a teleprompter. Uh, I think people want something real, unauthentic. They want to know that they're genuine, that they're looking out their interests. And I think the other part is there's just an anti-Washington sentiment that people see increasingly, not just because of this president, but overall the dysfunction in Washington. President Obama and his team believe the war on terror is over, um, that the United States should be taking a law enforcement approach, essentially, uh, to challenge what they say violent extremists. Mm -hmm. Your reaction to that? I think they're hugely out of touch. I think when you look at this and you look at uh, an administration that called ISIS the JV a year ago, that lifted up Yemen, that talked about other spots around the world as visions of, of success. Heck, under Secretary Clinton, an administration that said there was a reset with Russia. Uh, in each of these instances, you see a, a, a current administration under this president and his former and current Secretary of States 
who say things that, that end up ultimately not matching with reality. That's part of the problem we have with credibility in the world that we're willing to take action. You've said in the past you relied on Jeb Bush for advice. Mm -hmm. um, you considered him a good governor mm -hmm. in Florida. Um, he appears to be running. Why challenge him? Well, I'm not running against Jeb Bush if I'm running. Uh, in the end, if I end up being a candidate, uh, I'm going to be a candidate because of what I think I can offer the American people uh, for the sake of, like I said, my sons and their generation and how we can make this a better country for everyone, not just for one group or another.